In the next session, we will dive into the critical role of sponsors, and we already saw with those two presentations how sponsors can be game changers and very important. So engaging sponsors on and through sports and sports-related values is now our subject. Uh, we know that sponsors can actively contribute to societal issues such as gender equality, environment sustainability, circular economy, citizens' programs, and community involvement. Engaging sponsors strategically is key to creating a lasting impact, not only within the sport arena, but also beyond, of course. We are delighted to welcome our moderator for this session, uh, Mrs. Asya Amdi. Asya has been a sport journalist since 2012. In June 2021, she published Joula comme Megan, her first essay on the struggle of these female athletes who have been fighting for a century to be respected as athletes on and off the field. As a print reporter, she focuses on the role of sports in society, gender, equality in sports, and all forms of discrimination on the field. Please welcome Asya Amdi. Hello everyone, welcome. I'm really glad to have so many of you today in the audience. Um, now a new round table entitled Sports Events as Catalyst for City Transformation. Such an appealing program. Uh, for the upcoming hours, we will be talking about sponsors involved in sporting events, show how sponsors, which are key actors of sporting events, try to create a lasting and meaningful impact on sports society and people, how City try to make sponsors invested in social issues such as gender equality, environment, circular economy, social and so solidarity, economy among others, and finally, explain how sponsors contribute to create long-lasting impact. Um, among the speakers, we are pleased to have Eric Desbonnets in charge of operations and sustainability for the Paris 2024 Games and Coca-Cola, which is a historical partner of the IOC, and he will tell us more about how Paris 2024 are a game changer of the ecological transition at Coca-Cola. Welcome, Eric. Next, Marie Barsac, Executive Director, Impact and Legacy within the Paris 2024 Organizing Committee. She was already in charge during the candidacy, and it's a long-term project. Welcome, Marie. <laughs> now, Thierry Huguenin. Thierry is in charge of sports sponsorship at the Française des Jeux, which is the French National Lottery, FDJ. La Française des Jeux has become a sponsor of Paris 2024, and Thierry will tell us more about the Gagner du Terrain initiative and how it aims at developing sports practice and sport for all in the whole country. Welcome. And finally, Eddie Ferry, Eddie is head of marketing, uh, marketing France for ASICS, market <coughs> leader in France for footwear in running, tennis, and indoor sports. ASICS it is not a sponsor of Paris 2024, but is nevertheless <laughs> very active on the territory of the games. And Eddie will tell us how. Welcome, Eddie. Actually, the organization of sports events creates momentum for host cities. It is an opportunity to, stake, to take stock of the existing facilities, to assess the short and long-term solutions, to evaluate economic, urban, and societal challenges, and to plan events that contribute to the transformation of the city in a way that meets the needs of the community and the individuals. 
So we will be talking about the strategic management of sponsors, about the role of the cities, and organizing committees in partnering with sponsors with shared values. First of all, I will ask each of you one question, first one. Our one table will start with three general questions to all participants. Um, first one, how does the organization company you represent define social business impact and uh, how uh, it integrates integrate the issue into the overall organization, company, vision and strategic plan? Who wants to start? Okay. <laughs> I go? Lady first. I go. Um, yeah, so good to see you all. Um, as you understand, Coca-Cola is a long-term partner uh, of the games. Uh, we've been a partner for 95 years, so we clearly have a role to play uh, in building that dynamic. And when we talk about social inclusion, uh, that's really something close to our DNA. Um, as you understand, our brand is uh, all over the world in more than 200 countries. Um, and for many, many years, uh, it's all been about inclusion. It's all be, always been about bringing together different communities. Uh, and we all understand it, it's very relevant. Uh, and, and to be more specific, in France, our brand is present in eight households out of ten. So we do have high visibility. We do have a role to play. Uh, and, and that started a long time ago with our commercials. Uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of commercials that uh, were highlighting diversity, inclusion, bringing together people with differences, respecting each other. So we do believe that uh, we have a reach uh, on that dimension. And um, the games is just a unique opportunity to leverage that. So this is consistent with what we're doing internally. Uh, and it's an American brand, but it's, it's a local anchor. Uh, we are made in France, we have five sites, we have 2,500 employees, and those values about um, diversity, inclusion, respect are, are core to our brand. So it's consistent with how we operate in the countries where we are, and it resonates very much with the values of the games. And to be more specific, if you look at what's going on for Paris 2024, uh, it is clearly an accelerator. Um, we've been partnering for many years with um, Sport dans la Ville, uh, which is a great association which is uh, helping um, kids from uh, you know, prioritized suburbs to uh, get into some form of discipline through sport and, and through that to get to employment and, and even to create their own company. So this is a great association where, you know, a partner for many years, but the Games has been an accelerator. This was the right time to help them invest. Um, so we'll be helping them to invest in uh, sports fields within the suburbs uh, with more than six play fields every year. Um, and more importantly, we want to help them to demultiply their impact. Uh, and the key program here is to make sure that we are helping them uh, in an education program. Our target is by the end of 2024 to have 200 people train to demultiply the power of education. And having them train in, in management, uh, in coaching, so that themselves, they can demultiply that effort. So this is what it means. And again, the, the Olympic and Paralympic Games is a great opportunity to, to make it live. Thank you, Rick. You are nodding, Cherry. Okay, it's my turn. Are you, All right. Do you have anything uh, maybe to, to say about Absolutely. this issue? Sure, so good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for having me today. I'm very happy to be with you today, but um, I'm delighted to be with you today, actually. But I usually don't have the opportunity to express myself in English, so I apologize in advance for the mistakes and for the fact that I have to read my notes in order to make myself clear or at least I will try to. So, <clears throat> I'm in charge of sports sponsorship for FDJ. FDJ is the French National Lottery. And FDJ manages scratch games, uh, as well as draw games, such as Lotto or Euro Millions, and uh, sports betting as well. People usually don't know it, but all over the world, there is a real close connection between uh, national lotteries and good causes. 
many many trees in many many countries they finance non-profit sector some help the preservation of historical patrimony others have chosen sport whether they support high level athletes or they develop sport for all or they can also do both fdj my company is also very close to good causes its ancestor the french national lottery was created 90 years ago right after the first world war to help those injured during the war today fdj still has this tradition of good causes but good causes have diversified 40 years ago we started financing sport in france with a contribution that goes to sport for all so today in france all gyms all swimming pools all sporting clubs they receive part of their funding from fdj five years ago we started financing heritage historic buildings etc with a special lottery and scratch tickets dedicated to the cause and more recently fdj helps the preservation of biodiversity with a ticket called mission nature mission nature which was released last october part of the stakes is given to the french biodiversity office to help preserve the forests in france and abroad so as you have just seen uh, there is a strong a strong a really strong link between fdj and sport in france furthermore we have been partner of the french olympic committee since the sydney games in 2000 so therefore there was a real logic for us being partners of paris 2024 especially with the games at home something we have been waiting for 100 years and that's all i had to say about it that was perfect <laughs> thank you exactly i didn't say it after uh, at the in the introduction but there are four non english i mean native speakers so please be be patient <laughs> and uh, Terry, you have done very well thank you um marie next well, yes uh, for paris, paris 2024, 2024 yes of course uh, it's in our dna in our vision uh, i think you heard about it yesterday uh, we want to organize the games of course uh, two main competitions but we also want to leave a strong legacy uh, and to uh, really uh, have uh, an, a positive environmental and uh, social impact so for this reason we adopted a strategy very early in the project in 2019 uh, 18, uh, we secure money, we voted a budget dedicated to this uh, uh, legacy strategy, uh, and uh, we launch actions uh, such as uh, the creation of this endowment fund that I talked about yesterday, uh, that launch uh, call for projects like Impact uh, 2024. Those actions are very concrete, uh, they have already produced an impact, um, we will have uh, in the next day the publication of our report about it. Uh, you can find data about uh, the results of the, uh, the, the, the strategy we launched. Uh, but more uh, of all, we also uh, encourage our sponsors to contribute to that strategy. Uh, and uh, the strategy made of two different actions, uh, an exemplarity in the organization of the games and uh, long-term programs uh, to generate uh, social impact. Uh, we have sponsors that has been engaged oh. in those two dimensions. Thank you, thank you. Can you give us uh, maybe one or two examples of projects uh, followed, I mean, in this, in this uh, yeah. dotation uh, fund? Yes, Impact 2024. Yes, but perhaps uh, one example because my neighbor <laughs> is in charge of that also. Uh, we launched um, a call for project dedicated to promote sport practice for women because in France we don't have a 50-50 uh, sport practice between men and women. And um, this call for project is financing solutions that helps women to practice sports with the support, financial support of uh, the Française des Jeux. This is a good model to address uh, a clear message. We 
want to support those who are active every day uh, to promote sports practice for women and we uh, encourage companies to uh, a common board and uh, we hope that this call for project will continue after 2024 as you understand uh, everything we've done so far um, we wish uh, those actions to continue after 2024 so Thierry I I'm <laughs> counting on you <laughs> thank you Marie and now last but not least Eddie in ASICS. Yeah, very um, happy to. Uh, thank you for letting me speak, although I'm not an official, or we're not an official sponsors, but really appreciate being here. I think we're all fighting for the, you know, the, the same topic and the same cause, which is using sports as a, as a lever to promote a better world and, and, and a better place to live for us, our children, and everyone else. So uh, this is why we're here. Uh, the question was about how is this social involvement embedded in our strategies and our marketing plans and our actions? Um, for ASICs, I'd have to go a level above uh, in the reflection, uh, much like what Thierry explained. ASICs has been built around this concept. Um, I'll remind a bit of the uh, concept, uh, 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 context around the brand, because uh, we've done the homework and we know that not everybody is aware, so it'd be a good place to remind you that ASICs is actually a, an acronym that stands for Anima Sana Incorpore Sano. Uh, so uh, sound mind and a sound body, which is our, our tagline and has been our tagline and even our name since we've you know, been created in, uh, in 49 in Japan, Kobe, Japan, and a Japan that was destroyed by the Second World War and where our founder um, thought that the best approach to put the country back in action and especially the youth that was obviously devastated and lost for you know, purpose and sense in life was to give them you know, sports as a solution, give them a, a sense of direction through physical activity and that is why he created uh, you know, the ASICS brand and that's why he's been pushing and we've been you know, partnering with the CIO for a long time, not you know, for the French, uh, the French edition obviously, but we've been a partner of Tokyo and it's obviously a, every time sports could be a lever, a lever to make people move and feel better, you know, we're, we're in it and we're happy to support the cause. So, um, so it's really embedded in who we are, as you'll understand, and in everything we do. Uh, hence, in our marketing plans, in our strategy, in our brand vision, in our mission statement, everything just, you know, sweats and, and, and is really, really strongly connected to how can we contribute through sports, through physical movement, to making uh, the world a better place for, uh, for your mind. Uh, for your body first, because we always associate physical activity with a, a healthy body, but also a healthy mind, because we know right now the context is a challenging one for our minds, and moving can, uh, can make us feel all uh, much better if we do. Thank you, Izzy. And now we'll move on to the second <coughs> question about commitments uh, in connection to the Paris 2024 Games. Um, now, Thierry, uh, can you tell us a little bit about FDG's commitment <laughs> and how they are linked to the games, yeah. to the next mm. games. So, um, thanks to the partnership with Paris 2024, some of our social commitments are really intensifying. I would like to mention four of them. First, the commitment to gender equality. We aim to develop the practice of women's sport, which is lower than that of men not to mention the lack of visibility of women's sport on television. So we launched, and Marie talked about it, we launched, uh, we launched each year together a call for project to promote sports for women. This was the first topic. Then sport for company employees is very important to us as well. And we have launched several internal programs thanks to the games. In particular, the challenge operation, as you may know, the Paris 2024 Games Marathon will be open to the general public for the first time. So this was an opportunity to launch a major internal preparation program to which 10% of FDJ employees signed up. They are training for three years now to be ready for the Games Marathon. And we can I will be there. <laughs> really? Good. Congratulations. Thank you. So we can therefore say that thanks to Paris 2024, one in 10 FDJ employees came back to sports, which is quite a lot. So this was the second topic. The third is the environmental issues and the climate emergency, which are also very important topics to us. Um, Paris 2024 helps us addressing those, top with those issues with the climate coach. So what is the climate coach? <laughs> Climate Coach is a platform that calculates your greenhouse emissions. 
whether they are professional em greenhouse emissions or personal. Paris 2024 developed the platform for its own employees. And it worked so well that it, uh, it, it, they decided to share it with all the partners to increase its impact. So I, FDJ immediately volunteered. I immediately volunteered to, to, uh, to decline the tool, to launch the tool at FDJ. That's what we did 10, ten days ago. Okay, and thank I, you, Thierry. And I think you want to show us a short video? Absolutely, because last but not least, the um, Paris 2024 partnership helped us developing sport for all with the launch of a program called Gagner du Terrain. You could translate by um, gaining some playground. It, it aims field, to... Yes. Yeah, field, yes. Mm. Field, yeah. It aims to build local sports fields all over France with free access for the people. We want to develop sporting practice and leave a legacy after the Games with 50 playgrounds by the end of 2024. 32 have already been uh, selected. So this is a short film that explains um, the operation to the cities that would like to apply. So this is our main project, uh, our main policy for a, a real legacy after the Games, 50 playgrounds all over France in big or small cities, in big, big cities or even in, in, in everywhere in the country. So this film explains to the city how they can apply. Thank you. Thank you, Thierry. And um, I'll wait until the end of the video. Okay. And um, I think, Eric, you also have some things to tell us about commitments Absolutely. at Coca-Cola. Yeah. We, we are clearly leveraging uh, the, the dynamics of the games on, on three key topics. We have three focus points, which is obviously sustainability, then we have the social you know, implication and integration, and celebration. And all these are, are very much linked to our brand. And obviously, when we talk sustainability, uh, we have a role to play on, on packaging. Uh, we all know the, the focus, uh, the requirement to accelerate on circular economy, and, and that's um, a commitment we have to take our share. Um, since 2018, uh, we launch uh, globally a program which is called World Without Waste uh, with an ambition by 2030 to collect as many bottles and cans as the one we put on the market. It's a massive commitment, it's huge, and Paris uh, 2024 is an accelerator of that ambition. Um, already today, um, you know, we are reaching 100% recyclability uh, for our packaging, and that's going to be true globally by 2025. Um, by 2030, we want to make sure we have at least 50% recycled material in every packaging. But again, um, I think that's, that's 2030, that's, that's a long time. So our ambition for the Games is to prove that we can change the model and we can accelerate that transformation. And that's exactly what we're doing um, with um, the collaboration of Paris 2024. Uh, we've been working on that for two years with the collaboration of the city of Paris. And, um, you know, we took the challenge as an opportunity. And, and again, we've been, we've been partners for 95 years. So we've always delivered the games a certain way. We are reinventing it for Paris. And our ambition is to inspire the future games, future events, um, not only sport events, but also cultural events like concerts that we have used in the last two years to test the model. So we'll be ready by 2024. So what are we doing? We are moving from uh, serving uh, our drinks only uh, in, in PET bottles, in plastic bottles, to a mix where we will reduce the number of packaging used using fountains, the one you see in uh, movie theaters, um, will have more than 700 fountains implemented within the heart of Paris to serve our drinks. The challenge is in the cinema, it's 20 degrees, outside it's going to be more than 35. So a lot of technology involved, but we have a solution and it works. We'll also use uh, what you see in restaurants and in bars, the refillable bottle. You know, this glass bottle that you can use 25 times will also be available during the games. And everything will serve, because we also have PET bottles, because in some place you don't have the water connection, you don't have square meters to put the empties, so you need this combination. 
but with a commitment is that 100% of the bottles served within the competition site, within the public, will be collected. And the key there is that with the partnership of Paris 2024, everything will be served in reusable cups that will be washed, redeployed, and have multiple lives. So that's a, a major transformation because we have 18 million drinks to serve within two times two weeks. And that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, and we want to make sure that this has a second life. Second act, um, second topic is uh, social commitment. I spoke about Sport dans la Ville. Uh, 2024 will be the occasion for them also to uh, get a chance uh, to be a torch bearer. So we'll have 50 kids from Sport dans la Ville that will be a torch bearer and will leave the intensity of the games. And um, as we operate within the competition site and serve the athletes and the volunteers and the officials, we'll also make sure that uh, we have at least 50 um, uh, kids from Sport dans la Ville, uh, kids and, and young adults, uh, uh, being part of this activation uh, for Coca-Cola. And finally, with our brand comes celebration. Uh, we're about sport, we're about music, and we do want to play that role uh, along the torch relay for three months, uh, reaching out uh, to every single people, uh, or at least 80% of the French population at reach. Uh, this is what we want to support. Thank you. And I think maybe, Marie, you, you want to... <laughs> yes, but uh, our main some... commitments, you know about it, it's to reduce from 50% our carbon print. Uh, in order to do so, of course, we are tackling every uh, carbon uh, opportunities to be reduced. Uh, you have a great example with the plastic. Uh, probably I can share with you another great example lead by our sponsors concerning energy. Uh, we have two sponsors, EDF and Enedis, which are fully engaged with us. And um, thanks to their uh, commitments with us uh, to reduce our carbon print, um, we will manage to uh, use 100% uh, um, renewable energy and also um, to um, uh, use grid connected to every spot venues. This is important because we are organizing some um, uh, competition in this city mm. uh, and uh, it will be a massive change for the city also to be grid connected and it, because it going to last after the games. I'll give you an example just here at the Eiffel Tower. Uh, you know there will be the beach volleyball and uh, the um, sexy foot for the Paralympics. Uh, and, uh, Line of football. Yeah. And uh, for that, uh, we will use grid-connected energy uh, and this is going to last for after. And every year in uh, Paris, you have a concert uh, for the National Day in July, organized by the city of Paris. But after the Games, these concerts, these huge concerts, will be uh, organized without generators. And this is uh, important for the city of Paris, but it is Organ, um, already uh, decided to um, implement this solution in 300 cities in France. As you understand, it's a benefit for the organization of the Games, but it will also a benefit for the cities in France to organize sport events, but as you said, also cultural events, concerts. Uh, and this is a mechanism that it is in, in, uh, in, on the way, uh, and it co will continue after the Games. I think um, the, this action of acceleration, how the games are an opportunity to accelerate development is unique and very important. Every edition of the games is doing better than the past one. This is a game, uh, but we are clearly playing this game. Thank you, Marie. And finally, Eddie. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, about Ans ASICs. Yeah. Answering your question about activating the Paris Olympic Games, but you know the partner is... <laughs> challenge. <laughs> but I'm sure you have a lot of here. things to tell us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. I'll take the <laughs> challenge. Uh, no, as you understood, as I hope you understood from the, the previous inter intervention, you know, it, it, we've always been looking for IDs, angles and, and activations and, and ways to to promote the place of sports in, in society. And, and I'm not going to remind you what you all heard in the news this morning again, as probably every morning in the last few years, uh, the, the, the global context makes it very, very difficult for us as a society today. So, um, so we've believed, I think, and it came even you know, more uh, a, a true and, and, and strong after COVID that it, it was important for us to do something. Sports, 
running in particular, but sports in general, has always been a, a, a value that people have turned to in crisis, whether it was you know, uh, the, the, the old crisis, the, the bank system crisis in the world. The only economy that stays you know, pretty strong within these difficulties is, is sports, because people need physical activity as a way to you know, get out of, of the, the, the situation, the context, their you know, daily difficulties to, you know, to get in their head, to, to reconnect with themselves. So again, this is something we've, we've looked at, and, and us as, as, a, as, a, as a marketing team, it was really important for us to, you know, to do something for the situation in France. And when we looked closely at France and we saw a bit of the studies that were released, we figured out that it was a, a situation to be tackled you know, in the city of Paris, which is a, a city that has you know, great advantage, advantages, sorry, a, a, a great lifestyle, but also a difficult one, uh, one that really, really uh, takes a toll on, 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 on its people. Um, the, the Parisians want to be active, they are, but at the same time, there's, again, a lot of challenges. So we figured, what can we do uh, to tackle that topic and, 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 and make sure that we have an impact with a, a specific population? And then, you know, if we have success, we'll be happy to take that recipe and, and expand it you know, across the, 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 the country Country, but also the, the world. So we uh, we got in touch with the city of Paris. Uh, you know, Mathilde is here, Stéphanie, Pierre Abadon, uh, uh, the deputy of sports. Uh, we we connected, and it's already a topic, obviously, that was really close to their heart. Making sure that you know they could get the Parisians moving. They have initiatives that exist. They know the challenge. So basically, we sat down and we looked at a way to you know to work hand in hand in, in building a, a a program together uh, that would actually have a, a strong and tangible impact. On Parisians. So we've launched that this year. It's called Paris Bouge ton Esprit. It will be working basically on three, uh, three specific angles. The first one is uh, promoting physical activity and making people aware. There's still a lot of people that don't really understand the role of, of you know, physical activity and, and actually not so much the role of physical activity. They don't really understand the fact that they're under pressure and that they would need uh, themselves physical activity. They, believe, they see it as something that's good for the others, but you know, I'm, I'm not concerned so much. Well, you know, when we ran studies, we understood that you know a lot of people are are, are connected with that issues. Um, the second one is creating tangible actions. So you know, we'll set up, and we already have uh, sports sessions, free, accessible, inclusive for everyone, uh, to make sure that you know people get in touch with sports if they don't really practice it, or if they've lost that connection, they reconnect with sports. Uh, again, for their mental well-being. And the last one, which connects a lot to what we said before, is. Leaving a, a legacy, leaving a, you know a, a mark, leaving especially physical places where people can actually practice more sports, and we know it's also a, a challenge in a big city like Paris. So uh, you know, using the design active uh, principles, but also rebuilding uh, uh, or contributing to rebuild stadiums uh, in Paris and, and things like this, just to live more places in the city where people can actually have a connection with sports. Um, so this is what we're going to do uh, with the city of Paris, but obviously. Obviously, we're not blind to the context, and, and we understand that the, the Olympics coming, you know, to France, to Paris, are going to be a great accelerator. You, you already see that the, the, in the public scene uh, and the political speeches, there's never been as much sports as today, and, and that's for sure, you know, the place of the Olympics that contributes to this. Uh, next year, sports and physical activity is going to be uh, la grande cause, the great cause for France, and it's something that the government established. For a country like France, it's huge. Honestly, uh, I don't know it's if true. people realize from the outside. <laughs> it's something that's unheard of, and that's obviously the, the, the territory and the context that the Olympics are going to create for all this. So we are, in a separate way, in a different way, we're going to be happy to contribute with, to that whole dynamic and, and really finding a way to making sure that the, the Parisians for us, but the French in general, uh, make it more of a habit uh, to, to move uh, because we, we definitely need to. Thank you. Maybe you have also something to tell us about um, your involve involvement with the IPC. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Because obviously, yeah, 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 for sure. We're ha happy to as well. Um, ASICS has been a sponsor and a partner of the, the, the Olympic movement for forever. Um, so we've been you know, partners in the recent years of Tokyo, but we've been partners before, obviously. And it was really important for us to, 
um, the IPC, the International Paralympics Committee, came, you know, knocking on our door and understand if, you know, what we could do to, to support. And we've decided to become a partner. So we're not a partner of the Games per se, or the, you know, the Para or the Olympic Games, but we're partners of the IPC. Uh, again, to make sure we promote physical activity for everyone, uh, and that's not leaving aside the people that are impaired with, uh, you know, with different kinds of handicaps. Um, so, so that's a key element for us, and it's also why. In our Paris plan, for example, one of the first actions we took was to contribute financially to the renovation of the Pershing, uh, Pershing it's tough to say in, in English, Pershing Stadium, which is going to be a, a hub and was a hub last year during the, the, the World uh, uh, Championships for you know, para uh, mm -hmm. track Athletic. and field. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly, it was, it was a, the training center and is going to be a hub for uh, para, para sports competitions in the future. So again, we're really happy to Within that inclusivity speech, we're obviously talking, you know, various different topics. The, the gender gap, you know, the women's in sports is, a, is one we'd like to tackle. When you look at the statistics, you see that uh, the young audience has really disconnected with sports and at the same time disconnected with their mental well-being. The, the numbers are appalling in, in how depressed, how negative, how low their mental health uh, 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 KPIs indicators are. And obviously, uh, you know, the para sports and, and, and the handicapped and the people that, you know, have a... Uh, 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 less easy access to sports because of, of, of physical uh, and, and mental challenges are also a population we were targeting with our program. So, um, so it's good that you're reminded because I was going to forget. I should have <laughs> wrote notes, but... That's but my you. job. Yeah, good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Eddie. And now we move on to the final question, um, which we'll be, we'll be talking about return on investments. And uh, first I will ask this question to, to Marie. And um, how do you view this return in the Paris 2024 Games Committee? Uh, yeah, well, for us, um, this is already a success because we uh, managed, as you understand yesterday, to uh, work together uh, with the public authorities, uh, but also the sport movement. Everybody is in the same dynamic and everybody know uh, how to, uh, to work together. And um, I think we made the demonstration that having a timeline, the same one, uh, to put the budget on the same topic all together and uh, being ambitious, uh, to change uh, um, the lives for sports, it is possible uh, and uh, it is a, a political um, action and decision that must be made after the Games also. So this is the first uh, for us, um, uh, I don't know the English name, uh, return on investment for, for us. And of course, uh, the second uh, side, uh, a side political part, it's um, the legacy that we're going to leave, the programs that we're going to leave uh, after 2024. This is of course uh, very powerful uh, and it's also um, for our country very important to, uh, to, to, to share in the next months with the population to make them understand that those games has been useful for them and it was not only a competition again but it has been a, a global project mm. uh, to, uh, uh, which address some um, benefits for the world population everywhere in France. So this is also a very important benefit. The engagement of the world France is a key issue when you organize such an event and uh, having um, already results before the games is clearly important. Can you maybe uh, tell us more about some, maybe some examples of um uh, benefits of the games in Paris and yeah. Paris region yeah, after, I will give you after the games? Yeah. An example uh, concerning uh, the Sensani, you probably know about our ambition for Sensani. We choose to organize competition in this department in France because uh, this is uh, uh, the youngest department and on the other side uh, a department where there is a lot of deprived area. It's the poorest department in France so we w wanted to have uh, an impact, a positive impact in that department, providing more sports facilities, more swimming pools, uh, but also uh, to uh, uh, leave
believe, um, a, a new quarter with uh, the Olympic and Paralympic Village uh, and uh, all urban uh, fa new facilities. Uh, this is clearly a benefit. This is something that is concrete. We already uh, were very uh, pushy in the schools in saint denis to um, talk about the games there in order to um, connect the, the, the youth to the games in their territory. We also organized this program, One, Two, Three, Swim, in saint Sunny in particular, to have also those good stories, those cl uh, clear uh, objective impact to this territory. Uh, I think um, you heard yesterday from the, uh, the, the city of Saint-Denis that it is already effective, but we need to talk about it uh, more and more, uh, because as you know, when you organize the games, at the end of the day, there is some um, issues about the perimeters, where people can move in the city, uh, and before the competition, it can be hard for the inhabitants. Uh, so our challenge is to promote all the jobs we have done before, all those uh, social benefits which are positive to balance uh, the situation of those uh, perimeter that impact the everyday lives of those inhabitants. This is a challenge, but bef because we have done so many things, I think we, we're going to manage it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Marie. And next, Eric. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, Something as you understand, um, you know, we have several focus. I, I think the big one is, is definitely the, um, the role we can play on, on the sustainability and, and the circularity of, of packaging. Uh, I think there are high expectations on that. Um, so, making a demonstration that, you know, we can be part of a solution and that we can change our model, uh, making sure that we provide a, a legacy and that we can inspire future events, being Milano, being uh, Los Angeles, uh, and again, all our cultural events. Uh, I, I think that's uh, definitely a, a key return we expect from Paris. Uh, the other one is about confirming that you know, we're legitimate in, in building the, the energy, the connection with the overall French population. Uh, again, I spoke about the torch relay, uh, or the Olympic, the Paralympic. Uh, we also be providing tickets um, to people who couldn't reach to the games. Uh, and that's also a key role as a partner to provide uh, tickets for the Olympic, the Paralympics, uh, which gives us, again, this uh, legitimate connection um, with, um, you know, the people where we operate. And obviously with our people, because um, we have 30 people dedicated to the Games, but it's, it's close to 3,000 people who will contribute to the success and be proud of it. And, and finally is, is making sure that, um, you know, we keep um, this reputation um, positive with um, you know, the, the dynamics we can bring along the game uh, before, during uh, and after. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Eric. <laughs> and finally, Jerry. <laughs> well, the, the question of the return on investment is never easy. So for FDJ, the return on investment will be mainly in terms of brand image. However, the improvement of brand image among sports fans often leads to a change in their purchasing behavior. So the communication return on investment becomes a marketing return on investment. And according to me, this is the very interest of sports sponsorship. Because when you connect your brand with teams, with international sporting events like the Games, or with athletes who appeal to the public, your brand benefits from the positive impact of this universe. So that's the first uh, goal for, for our company. But if not enough, <laughs> we've also planned a more direct return on investment. <laughs> we launched several Paris 2024 themed FDJ games since 2021. The latest we've launched is the scratch ticket where you can win money Ooh. as usual, or you can also win your tickets for Paris 2024, oh. yeah. which is very much appreciated by the players. <laughs> and I brought one what ticket you for you, Asia, today. Oh! And I wish you good luck. That's, that's a winning one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, must, I need to tell you, I don't share it. I mean, if I win, I keep everything. It's 100% for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Whoa. Thank you, thank you very, very, very much, Chile. <laughs> and to conclude, Eddie, and return on, 
on investment at ASICS? I uh, would have liked it to be a scratch ticket from the <laughs> but I guess there's just one, so... You <laughs> should anymore. have brought one for everyone. <laughs> um, everyone in the audience as well. <laughs> should have told me earlier. <laughs> A return on investment for us um, is really, and in, in we're, you know, the, the campaign with the city of Paris again, and I should have said it uh, previously, of which we're really proud and really thankful for the trust that that uh, La Ville de Paris is 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 shown, and and the partnership that they've built with us, uh, you know, again, it makes us really proud and and really energized. Uh, um, when we work on it every day, because it's, a, it's an everyday topic, we have dedicated teams you know, working on that topic specifically. The first thing we look at really is engagement, event mm -hmm. participation. Uh, how many people can we make sure are going to connect with the information that we're putting out there? Uh, because we believe that this is what will change their understanding of the topic of physical activity and its, their, its connection to their mental well-being. And will, in turn, you know, after a certain amount of, of interactions, trigger something that you know will make them move if they were not moving already. Um, we started the partnership by uh, working on a survey amongst Parisians, where we measured, uh, you know, how many of them did physical activity, uh, how many of them are, you know, unsatisfied with the level of physical activity today, how many of them obviously are impacted by uh, mental health or well-being topics. And you know this. The other uh, return on investment for us, or the other elements we'll track, is the evolution of these indicators. Uh, we have planned through the course of the partnership, which is built for, uh, as, as a two-year story, so starting in 2023 and going all the way till 2025, uh, to measure regularly uh, the impact that we have, but not only us, that the whole context, La Grande Cause, the Olympics game, the Olympic game, sorry, will have on the on the physical activity of the Parisians, because we understand that it's not one actor, however you know strong he is and dedicated and and motivated, it's going to be the correlations of many different actions. So. For us, obviously, the main return on investment, as, as mentioned, and it's not you know, just because I'm sitting here, it's really what we're looking at every day, is how many people engage with us and how do we see the, uh, their connection to physical activity and their mental health evolving. Um, but obviously, you know, it's by saying this, if you're a sports brand and you have a bigger amount of the population you know, doing sports, you're obviously helping yourself, and and we'd be really happy to see that you know uh, uh, you know the, the 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 running population evolves from uh, you know 13 million runners today to 2025 uh, for their mental well-being and their physical well-being, obviously, but because that's going to create a bigger pool of, of of obviously people that will consume sports and will consume everything related to sports. So we're 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 you know really focused on the impact we're having, uh, but also very conscious that you know we're we're doing something that is also going to benefit. Uh, ASICs and the sports movement as a whole in, in turn. So, um, so uh, this is what we're going to, you know, what we're looking at now, and obviously what we'll keep tracking in the coming weeks and months uh, to make sure we, we, we have an impact on this, uh, this societal um, thing. Thank so. you, Izzy. Thank you. Thank Pleasure. you to everyone. And um, for the last 15 minutes, we will do a slide-do session. Um, so, we have a quick short session for anyone from our audience who wants to ask something, maybe, to give you a chance, if you're shy, or um, to ask anything you want, anonymously. No question? Yep. Okay. First one. Mm. There's two. Yes. <clears throat> I am looking. Okay. This one. Okay. I don't see you because of the light. So. <laughs> I see. Sorry. You. I see you. <laughs> I'm Hank Stockhoff from uh, Amsterdam. Uh, I have a question uh, for uh, Monsieur Eric Demonet. Uh, he just gave his microphone away. <laughs> <laughs> You pointed out very well the advantages of uh, Coca-Cola sponsoring sports. And I like a glass of Coca-Cola myself very much. <laughs> However, um, I might be wrong, but the image of Coca-Cola and soda drinks in general is not always compatible with 
striving to a good health and a healthy weight. True or not, I'm not interested if it's true or not, but how do you cope with these kind of challenges on your image? Yeah. Now, obviously, um, we know that um, you know, packaging is one topic. Uh, another one is sugar, and that's not a surprise to many. Uh, so for many years now, we've been very much investing in a total beverage company. Uh, and the mindset is clearly for us to provide choice. And just for information, during the games, our forecasts show that sugary products should be less than one-fourth of the volume we'll be serving. So I think as a company, we acknowledge that we need to provide a range of product and solutions. Uh, some are for the athletes uh, with very specific needs. There is water, there is non-sugar product, there is light, low-calorie sugar product. Uh, so, yes, we acknowledge that, and uh, we want to be a total beverage uh, company on hot and cold uh, non-alcoholic beverage for the games. Clear. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. So, we'll have a look at the other questions. Um, maybe the first one um, addressed to all of you. From your point of view, are mandatory requirements being necessary? Oh, okay. Well, from your point of view, are monetary requirements necessary to private companies to move on social impact issues? Who wants to answer? Maybe. I can take this one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, this is quite ambitious to uh, put the subject uh, of mandatory. Uh, the reality is that uh, every sponsors of the games are clearly engaged uh, behind the vision of the games. You, I think you clearly understand it, and behind the commitments, the reduction of the carbon print, uh, the social impact we want to uh, generate, etc. But the most difficult part is uh, to encourage our sponsors to generate uh, socially impacts through sports uh, without any links of their activity in their company uh, because when um, this is not a habit for the sponsors like FDG because FDG is supporting sports for decades as you understand but for other companies and I will tell companies um, talk about companies which are not here like LVMH which is a, lu a luxury group in France they are not used to um, finance sports a lot and when we discuss with them we discuss with uh, guys from the marketing department but in order to generate social impact we need to discuss uh, with the social and environmental responsibility department and it takes time to find the right person in this group to discuss with and to generate a project that will have a positive social impact and at the end of the day the games are coming and you haven't done lots of things so my recommendation on that field is that uh, I don't know if it it must be mandatory, but it can be mandatory to have the discussion and to have the right person around the table. This is very important for the future of the Games because generating a social impact is also a question of engagement of the world population to support the Games. It is clearly an objective for any edition uh, of the Games behind Paris 2024. Thank you, Marie. I will take another one, uh, the second one. Uh, become, has become the first one. Do you see value in having a long-term commitment with the causes you sponsor? Maybe Eddie? Um, <clears throat> if we see value, well, we, we believe there's value in our DNA. There's believe in, there's, we believe there's value in what we stand for. So yes, we absolutely believe that we need to pursue that commitment because it is who we are and we don't want to change ourselves. Um, the reality is that the context today makes it probably even more important to be who we are and to you know, push the IDs and defend the IDs that we're defending. Um, so you know, there's no question today about how relevant it is, but you know, we haven't changed one thing uh, since 49, basically, in what we stand for and what we believe. So, um, so the answer would be, uh, would be yes. Uh, and I think there was a second part. Do you want to go beyond? Yeah, we want to go, want until, to go beyond. until uh, <coughs> ASIC stops existing, basically. We, we, we're going to keep pushing. So as you understood, the, the partnership with the City of Paris will last until 2025. Um, but after this, and, and you know, we might continue if that has proven you know, to, to have an impact, a positive impact. And, and in any case, we'll keep pushing for this idea that you know, the world is a better place if we, if we manage the right balance between a, a sound mind and a sound body through physical activity. So um, you know, we're not going to change. 
Okay, thank you, Eddie. Um, okay, maybe the third one. How far after 2024 do you plan for these projects to deliver? Um, Thierry, maybe? Um, the I first one? I yeah. don't know yet. You don't know yet? <laughs> okay, it's too Honestly, early, maybe. Yeah, maybe, yeah. It's too early. Um, our maybe company is dedicated. <laughs> okay, maybe. Eric? We've been help, helping okay. sports for a decade, so we won't stop okay. after the game. You for won't sure. stop. Uh, I don't Forever. know yet how we're going <laughs> to uh, continue, but uh, we'll continue for sure. Okay, thank you, Thierry. Eric, you have something yeah, to so say? As I told you, we are, we've been partners for, for many years and we have signed a, a partnership until 2032. So we'll be there for uh, LA for the Summer Olympics, we'll be there for Brisbane. Um, and, and again, all that makes a lot of sense. Um, so everything we're doing, as I mentioned, you know, it, it's not something we do just for two times two weeks. Um, you know, there's just too much energy, too much investment. Uh, to, to let it go. So what we want is to make sure that everything we do, whether for sustainability, for social commitment, for um, you know, celebration, is something that we can learn from. And I must say we have a very disciplined after action review, which means that every country that close a game just brings uh, its team for uh, one full week into the future rose country. Uh, and there are a lot of learnings from there. Uh, so that we can keep improving and learning from each other. So yes, we have an ambition to keep moving and uh, using the games to accelerate our transformation. Perhaps one word about that. Yes. Um, uh, for us, there is a challenge to uh, transform so some sponsors of the games to sponsors of the sport movement after the games. Uh, of course, there is sponsors that used to be sponsors of the French NOC or French NPC. Uh, they will continue, as I understand, uh, Thierry. <laughs> but from others, they have never been sponsors of sports uh, before the organization of the game. And there we have to transform uh, their sponsorship after the games. And there we need to have data to encourage them to do so in order to contribute to generate this positive impact for the country through sports. Uh, that's why uh, impact measurement of all the actions we launched uh, with our sponsors and with our stakeholders, public stakeholders, sport movement stakeholders, is very important to have data, objective data, to uh, uh, discuss uh, effectively um, with data with future sponsors of the games, which will be sponsors of the sport movement. Thank you, Marie. Uh, maybe one for Thierry. We'll be talking about women in sports, which is a topic you like at FDG. <laughs> women in sports was a topic brought up a few times. How do sponsors play a role in changing this narrative when many in the sport would continue to value the main games, men's game over women's? Yeah, How do you do that at FDG? There's a lot to do. You know, um, we're very much involved in sports um, and in gender equality too. So, um, for example, our president is, is a woman. Um, our, Stéphane Palais. Absolutely. Our um, director of communication is also a woman. Our director of sponsorship, my boss, is a woman too. So we clearly go to gender equality this in the great. company. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Um, and in sport as well, and there's a lot to do. First, to, to improve the, 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 the practice for the women, but also the visibility of uh, women's sports on television, because we don't see much of it. And uh, a third um, battle could be more women in, in sports go governance, uh, in the federa international federations, national federations, in, in sporting movements, more women's in, in, in responsibility uh, in, in, those, uh, in those fields. So these are the, th the three uh, topics we're working on. Okay, thank you. Do you have something to say, Eddie, about the issue of, of women and how ASICS is involved on this well, yeah, topic? Of course, quickly, because I think we're running out of time. <laughs> but. Um, at our level, it's something we, we, we're actioning already, and the gender gap is something that's been you know, uh, identified uh, a long time. So we're not so much looking at you know, performance sports or the sports you watch on TV. We're obviously closer uh, in a lot of aspects to the sports in everyday lives of people, uh, and we realize that you know, the, the, 
unfortunately the level of women doing sports and you know a simple sport as an essential sport as running is 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 way too low versus you know what men do um, what we're doing is measuring or understanding the reasons for this insecurity is one uh, uh, mental you know the mental load of, of dealing with the household is one so and we're, we cannot act on all of them so we're, we're focusing on the ones that we can control that are within our reach and setting up events and initiatives that will you know help correct them uh, uh, for example insecurity is a big topic and a lot of women uh, consider they don't have time to run because when they're done with everything they had to do including work and you know running the, uh, the, the, the family then it's too late to go running uh, especially you know with these days at night and they don't feel secure well, you know, we're working. I can't really, uh, you know, say anything that w everything that we'll do. But in, in January, with the city of Paris, we'll launch our first series of activations, specifically focused on on making, you know, running more easily accessible to women, for example. So, I think it's a very broad topic, as was mentioned before. It could go to, you know, uh, uh, governance. It could go to very, you know, various topics where we need to treat the issue. For us at ASICS, we're really trying to tackle hard, you know, the topics that are within our reach. And as I've explained, this is what we're going to intend on doing for that specific uh, aspect. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. I don't think we'll have the time for two questions. Um, maybe the next one. Uh, will partnerships, I think it's a, a great conclusion, will partnerships with cities be an interesting road yes. in the future? <laughs> wow. Who wants to? Well, I, to, I can just start. I'll, I'll say yes, 100%. Uh, uh, I think we need to join forces now. It's it's no longer the time where public entities, you know, need to push a topic and private companies need to push the same topic. But separately, I think there's really convergence that has to come. The issue is too serious for us to stay separated, which doesn't mean we can do anything. I mean, working with the city of Paris and with a city that has, has much background, history, uh, uh, you know, we're not free to do everything we want. And they're really careful. And we're also being very careful. I think we're, I think we're pretty easy to manage. I, you'll have to ask them. But uh, so it doesn't mean you're free to do everything. There is a respectful place to have as soon as you enter the public field but I think we need to join forces in making sure you know the topic is too serious that you know we, we, we have to work together on it so yes thank you maybe do do you want maybe to add something on this issue no nothing to add okay <laughs> perfect perfect conclusion thank you thank you to to thank our you. speakers thank you to everyone for your questions